man, you come straight out of a cone. All right. This is that part right here. I'm going through the tunnel right now, though. So if y'all, if I lose y'all, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know tunnels did that. Mm-hmm. But that makes what, sense. Like blue shirts. Yeah. I never knew that. Oh yeah. Like like I think they're like regular tunnels. I ain't like I know if you go like kind of deeper like that. I got. Yeah. No. We not. But I mean, we going underwater though. Like this. This. This the Holland Tunnel. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, not like a, not like a, like a beaver tunnel, nigga. Like, <laughs> you, you below Godzilla right now is what you're saying. That's right, 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 exactly, exactly. Okay, okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Strat of a Comic Book. I'm your host, Will Farrow. Got the fellas Deuce and uh, Clinton in a tunnel, as, <laughs> as as you saw. Clinton is in the tunnel, uh, heading heading to go. He does what he does best, which is crack these jokes and make yeah. people laugh. Yeah. And the fact that he still doesn't sell edible sweatsuits of my size. I'm not saying you fat shame, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm not saying you're not. Just throwing it out there. Just throwing it out there. Well, fellas. Bad, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all good I'm trying to lose his weight so I can get, get into my homie's shit. So yes, don't sir. you worry. But, man, we got a lot to talk about. We got a lot to talk about. Uh, of course, we're going to be talking about the newest Deadpool and Wolverine trailer that just dropped. Uh, we're also going to be talking about X-Men 97 and um, the fact that I didn't realize that this show was going to put us on an emotional, traumatic uh, trauma experience um, right. in cartoon form. This is like watching uh, This Is Us in cartoon yeah. And I didn't know that. But before we jump in there, um, I want to start off with just some of the smaller stories today just to get y'all opinions as well. So uh, some big news that dropped this week. We are we've heard, you know, we're dropping two today. So first one. The godfather of the MCU. Is coming back. Wesley Snipes has reported that he will be reprising his role as Blade in the multiverse saga now it hasn't been reported where and when this is gonna happen so of course i wanted to get y'all opinions on one how y'all feeling about the news and where and when do you think we gonna see wesley snipes reprise his role i'm gonna start off with clint first i think we're gonna see wesley i was gonna you know my bad i was gonna say wesley pipes but uh <laughs> i tried so hard look, look and, and if you look, watch look, this if you watch, if you watch this, this clip, clip, you nasty. <laughs> yeah, look, I right, look, Clint, you ain't the only one. I was trying so hard to make sure I said Wesley Snipes. Snipes not pipes. When I tell you, my head kept going pipes, pipes, pipes. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> and both are legends. Both are legends. Legends. Both are legends. Both are legends. You know what I mean? Gotta, yeah. gotta, gotta acknowledge that. But no, uh, Wesley Snipes, I feel like the first time we're going to see him in the MCU probably won't be into i mean i'm gonna be honest i think we might see him in captain america i think he might get, you know uh uh in the um because don't forget wesley's uh not wesley snipes but but blade is a earth level situation if i'm not mistaken right mm -hmm. so it's like you know the first even hint at blade was in um was it in the, in the eternals or was it moon knight uh, no, eternals. in the eternals right so my thing is is that I do think it's got to be an earth level situation so i do think we're probably going to see him for the first time uh in um in uh in uh in uh captain america uh brave new world um either that or i think it, what's the other earth level or the thunderbolts will you see the one we'll see him in one or the other whether he's an actual character or whether it's going to be a post-credit scene but i do believe we'll see him one of those movies is going to debut him gotcha okay Deuce, what about you? So, man, I've been thinking about this since the news came out. And right now, because of because the MCU that really doesn't have a direction yet, I am so lost on weird. Because I, I feel like, okay, they, they specified the multiverse saga. But, like, I feel like we won't see Blade until they really delve into, like, like until, like, a movie is focused on the different worlds. And I don't know, as of now, I don't know which movie is going to focus on the different worlds. I like Clint's premise. 
to me with uh, a brave new world because like i said with, with exactly what he said with the street level i can see that and when you're thinking about brave new world i always harping back to that moment where um the uh, the new captain america uh where he listed out like when he was like you know it's you know it's, it's monsters it's it's um, uh magicians and uh, when he like when he went over yeah, when he was yeah, and lotted it out and yeah in the show yeah, yeah. And so because of that, I do like I, I can see him having that interaction of like like vampires, like you know what I'm saying? And, and I and it makes sense for him to interact with it more. So right. as like, that, I, yeah. my bad. My bad. Oh no, I was gonna say as of now, I don't really have um a, a spot that I think, but I am leaning towards uh Clint's because of what he said. Real quick, what was that? What was that monster John that they put out that Marvel put out? What was that like uh Werewolf by Night. Yeah. yeah, I can see, I can see another something like that, and then them putting it out either this Halloween or next Halloween. That's mm. that's that's the other thing. Like a where another because like it did Werewolf by Night did pretty good. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. So if they, yeah, if they put it out either put out something like that. You know what I'm saying? Then I believe that I think we'll see we'll see we'll see Blade. Okay. Um, so the, the two that I'm going with is, um, both, both, both good points, by the way, for to the both of y'all, uh, the two that I'm, I'm, I'm throwing mine on. Well, here, there's three. One is my hear me out. It don't make no sense because it's really just based off of one thing. I just want him to be shown in young Avengers and they all meet him. So he could go, you're not ready to roll with this. <laughs> and he just walk off. That's all I want to see. He just walk <laughs> off. <laughs> they were like, yo, some yeah. scary dude, all leather and a sword, just walked up and left. <laughs> Everything. Right. But the two real realistic ones I'm thinking Blade might pop into is either Doctor Strange 3 or Spider-Man 4. Doctor yeah, Strange uh, 3, just because of Midnight Suns, and I really feel like they're trying to gear towards a Midnight Suns type of run. I could right. see him yeah. talking to him. And maybe even being that blade in Midnight Suns with Moon Knight, um, um, and the rest of the, and the rest of the cats, uh, Doctor Strange, everybody else in there, Ghost Rider, and everyone else. I could see them trying to maybe uh, parallel those, but then also to Spider Man Four. I could see him being a Spider Man Four because he is in a lot of the Spider Man comics as well. That's when we got really introduced to Blade in the cartoon show. And so with Spider-Man now kind of being even more back to his street level, rather than, you know, dealing with, you know, the Avengers in game and everything that I have no doubt we'll see a Daredevil crossover again. Him interacting with the Punisher. Him That's real. Him That's real. Yep. I, so I can see Blade also yeah. being some kind of transition into that. So those are the I two. That the Dare, Daredevil still on the way too. Daredevil shows. Yeah. Bro. Way, so yeah. You're Bro. Right. And that just, Ryan oh, Reynolds' no. Daredevil and Wesley Snipes' Blade. That interaction is going to be goated. That is going to be the. That is going to be some prime comedy right there. When did Ryan Reynolds play Daredevil? You mean Deadpool? Uh, Deadpool. Ryan Deadpool. Oh, okay. I was like, Deadpool. We talking about Eric, we talking about, you know, but we talking about Eric Murdoch, right? Yeah, yeah. My fault. Oh. I, I, I definitely jumped way over. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. I was like, what movie I missed? Yeah, no, I right, mean, right, right, right. I definitely, no, I I mean, see that either. Um, yeah. but speaking of Daredevil, that was one of our next things. Uh, one of our next topics. Um, Daredevil is close to finished filming, and we did find out another piece that I think was very well added. That we now know that Daredevil: Born Again is not going to be a reboot. It really is just a season four of yep. Daredevil, and that is bringing back the original actress Vanessa as Wilson Fisk wife. She has been officially cast back into the show. They've yeah. seen her on set filming and everything. And I think she's one of the last pieces before they officially wrap. Uh, myself, I'm glad that they brought this back. Uh, no disrespect to their original idea, but you did so much in that Netflix show of pitting them together. Like yeah. that was one of the best like love stories I've really seen in Marvel. Watching a man break himself down to really like you know give her his vulnerable side, her understanding and her butching the fuck up. Like when she said like, "Yo, why don't you just take all of them out?" That I was like, "Yo, y'all built that up too much for us to see him with somebody else." Yeah, and no, try I, to I give agree. that chemistry. I agree. 
Um, here's what I'm excited about, to be honest with you, when it comes to the, the Daredevil situation, right? Um, you, something you just said, you said it's not a reboot, it's just a continuation. Marvel is doing a very good job at making continuations. Like, I'm glad X-Men 97 is not a reboot. It is right. a, it's literally right after the events of what happened when we were kids. So my yeah. thing is, is that Marvel needs to continue to adopt this thing if they're going to continue to bring back either old shows or bring back uh, characters and stuff like that. And you can tell Marvel is going through a revamp and they are, they've listened to the audience and they understand we ain't, we wasn't fucking with the stuff they was doing. And now they're in a situation where we're like, they're like, all right, let's go back to the basics. People like that Netflix show Daredevil. Okay, well, how can we, and I guarantee you, we probably will see the defenders in that job. We're going to get a, probably a Luke Cage sighting. We're probably going to get an Iron Fist sighting, which, I don't want to see him. You know, we're probably <laughs> going to get. Well, he's in Shang Chi too. Um, yeah, I, but you see what I'm saying, though. Like, yeah, yeah. like this, this is this kind of stuff is like okay. Like Marvel is listening to the fans, and they're listening to, and, you know. And I know we're not talking. I'm, I'm not speaking it from a, from a comic book level. I'm speaking from 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 a from a a content level, right? Yeah. Like this is this is you know when you said okay, this is not going to be a reboot. This is a continue. This is season four, nigga. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's like you it's like you trying to remix a, a already done recipe. It's like, yo, man, grand, grandmama's fried chicken don't need your remix. Exactly. And, and, and that's the perfect analogy because the show was so goaded. Like you said, like when you think because it's and because like I get the at first you're like, OK, we can't really. Like, how do we tell this story? But we're right. the, the, the great thing that that Daredevil series did was it truly stayed grounded to the point where you can put them back in and there's not going to be a question of, yo, where they've been this whole time. No, you know where he's been. You know yeah. where he's been. He was in Spider-Man. He was in Echo. Like, mm -hmm. you, he's, he was in, uh, yeah, you know where he's He was in, uh, what's the other one? Uh, shit. He was in fucking well, She-Hulk. She-Hulk. Yeah. yeah. And then, too, he's what I like around. about Yeah, and what I like about it, too, is the gap between it there's still opportunity there just because of what we seen. So it could be the time of like, hey, you know, Matt Murdock went took a little time, went to L.A., went to go chill and stuff like that. And it also helps catch up with the story between Echo and Kingpin. So now right. it's like, yo, the, the story of Echo and Kingpin between all of that stuff and then what's happened to him could still right. fit in that time to kick off season four because right. where they left us off in season three was perfect. You right. know, Kingpin surrendered, went to jail. Like, so we don't know how long it's been since it picked up, but it's still the perfect way for them to do it. So I'm just like you said, I'm excited to see them do continuations because it's now making the multiverse saga more like the multiverse rather than just reply, you know, depending on the live action. You have yeah. us now getting a whole bunch of different universes. I agree. Even continuations, filling I these agree. gaps, and then also too being able to figure out what you will do with the MCU's live action. Right, film. right, right. So yeah, I like this is it's starting to feel more and more like a multiverse. I I totally agree with that. Yeah, I totally agree with that. So yeah, so let's go ahead and drip to our first main topic. Um, it's supposed to be called X Men ninety seven, but I'm gonna call it This Is Us uh, ninety seven. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh. You mind if I just go real quick? Because I'm probably got to get ready to jump off in a second. I'm oh, yeah, by all, all means. Uh, like I said, I'm just working uh, here. But um, let me tell you something. X-Men 97, or X-Men, or This Is Us, as we're calling it, has hit a nerve that I never thought we would ever hit. And the nerve that it's hitting is it's touching on racism. It's touching on classism in America. It's touching on all these different points as well as you falling in love with these characters. My man, bro, I'm not going to hold you. When she told me, when she said Remy, I mean, she said, Sugar, I... Uh, well, it had to cut off because that's how he know it just... Oh, uh, he was about to cook, too. I know he was. About to cook. It was right there. It was right there. <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. Am I back? Yeah. yeah. You back. No, but yeah. I never cried about this. Uh, you know, it's 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 touching on a lot of personal topics. And what I like is Bo DeMaio, whatever he did to get fired had to be something that had nothing to do with writing. You know what I'm saying? Like it had to oh, be he had something. Only it, he had yeah. only oh, he did? 
Yeah, he had OnlyFans. That was why. So it violated the terms of like the Marvel Disney contract. Well, because they, need to, they need to bring him back. But long story short, man, like Bo DeMille did his thing. And the writing on this is exquisite. The story is exquisite. The 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 characters and understanding their dynamics and it's getting it's I mean I, yeah bro I have nothing else to I have nothing else to say but like that 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 show always touches me man especially you know even the other even the last episode right like Nightcrawler gave the best eulogy I've ever seen you know what I'm saying man I've so, I've felt so much emotion in a show like in such a long time and it's just again crazy that it's a cartoon. Right, you know, from watching like the massacre of Genosha to yeah, like, yeah. like, that, like, that reminded we, me of the Tulsa massacre. That was the Tulsa, yeah, massacre. yeah. That like, was, I like that was worse than Endgame. I was like, yo, it was, it was, this is this. I was like, man, watch it because it was just like, like, I told Clint before, and I don't know if I told you, dudes. So I was like, the reason why it didn't hit me so hard because I saw cable and I was like. Right, so we okay, they're gonna go fix this, right? Fix this. Right, right. They gotta go fix this, right? But then when the next episode came, <laughs> Gambit and Magneto, what did that intro? Right. Bro, right from the get go, no. I damn near cried. I so, damn near bro, cried. They not, yeah. Marvel not fucking with, not fucking around. Man, this Marvel is so this, this is why it 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 really hit me because all right. So I watch a lot of fucking anime, right? And Jujutsu Kaisen and Attack on Titan. Mm-hmm. Wait, Clint, you about to say something? Yeah, I, I was just saying I got a dip, fellas. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm all going good. up to the spot. No, that's all hey, good, man. We know you're on the road. We know you're on the road doing your thing, man. We yeah, appreciate, appreciate your time. Man. All right. Thank you, man. Yes, yes sir. Right, peace. But um, you so, yeah. So, I watch a lot of anime. And Attack on Titan and Jujutsu Kaisen, that, that last season of both of them was pure mm-hmm. trauma. I'm talking about like. That's what I heard. Yeah, That's pure drama, right? So going into X Men '97, I'm like, oh, it's nostalgia. It's the '90s. I'm like, yeah, hey, this is gonna be a good time, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and even with characters dying, I'm like, it's comic book stuff. They be bringing people back. They ain't gonna hit us hard like anything crazy, right? So as I'm watching it, I didn't let my defenses down from off of the anime, and then now I'm like, I'm back in the shit. I was like, bro, like, yo, like, like, yo, this is just as traumatic. As these last two seasons of anime that I watched, and I, and that's when I was like, "Oh, Marvel!" They like because and and here's what I think: I think it's the times because of shows like Game of Thrones and because of all like you know Jujutsu Kaisen and and uh, all the anime and because of all these more shows where you know like e- even The Walking Dead where main characters die and yeah. they see it like, "Oh wait, we can do this," and it's not it's not going to impact the show is like this is depending on how we write it if we write it well it's going to hurt but it's still going to be fire and so i think that now marvel is taking the gloves off they're like oh let's let's get into it and, and i think i remember a report probably like a year and a half ago where uh, where they were saying i think uh um uh werewolf by night was one of the first ones where they were saying like yeah we're we're getting more into that until those yeah. those like real like darker storylines, those things like yeah. that, we're going to get more into that. And I think that this is a part of that that regime. This is a part of that that shift of oh, it ain't just superheroes win at the end of the day. Like no, we we gonna lose some niggas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Like you, I think like how you said at the beginning, man. I was I was like you, just expecting. Okay, it's gonna be fun. Like yeah, right. you know we're gonna have our our struggle moment, but you know at the the you know. 20th minute, you know, it's going to be like, hey, the day was saved thanks to the <laughs> X-Men. It was like, nah. 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 Just, nah. <laughs> we, we, we're not doing that. we right. we taking back the day is saved to, I can't feel you, sugar. And just <laughs> saved to black. I was like, you, you motherfuckers. Bro. And when the new episode after that, I'm like... Bro, so that's just, it. Just if, if, you think, like if you think about the moments that they gave us within was it, we're on episode seven. Uh yes, yes, yeah. we're on episode seven now. Bro, we, we went through Storm losing her powers. We went through, like I said, that whole that whole genocidal arc in regards to that. We went through 
we went through seeing relationship trauma. We went through seeing identity trauma. I was like, bro, like, bro, this is a heavy ass show. And you, we, and I always go back to it because if you watch the original series, it was heavy like this too. And I'm like, yeah. this was a Saturday morning kids cartoon. Who? Yes, it was. How did they sell this show? How? Well, you know, you know what it was. You know what it was. We had stuff in the middle that made you kind of like not have to overthink that. So like, yeah. remember, shit went to commercial. So you had Fox Kids commercials <laughs> telling you what was next, telling you what was coming next week to get you excited. You had toy commercials coming out that you wanted to get for fucking Christmas. Nintendo 64 commercials showing. You had stuff that distracted you from that shit fully hitting you. <laughs> this is just you at fucking 1201 at midnight watching this shit. Now you can't go to sleep. Because you sitting here like, what the fuck did I just watch? Like, I watched Storm get her powers back. One of, like, such a beautiful weaved story oh of how they God. told that, that story from the comic books. Of her getting her powers, her getting her back to her original suit. It yeah. was all amazing. That yeah. shit went off and I was like, yo, Gambit is still dead. <laughs> like that shit did not leave. I'm like, I yeah. know Gambit's dead, right? Like, <laughs> I'm so glad she got her powers, but y'all know, like, Gambit died. He dead, dead, uh, horribly. Like, oh my god, this man is gone. This man, yo. So it's just, at least he went out like a G, though. At least he went he, out, man. He went out man. like such a G, bro. He went yeah. out like such a G, and to destroy. The master mode like that, the the master, master mode, mode kaiju, whatever that motherfucker was. Yeah, oh, yeah that's so that's so that's what it is. So technically, it was like it's um, it's pulled from uh one of these comic books. I believe it's X Men Extinction. Uh, yeah, I could be wrong. but basically, uh, that's supposed to be the version that Cassandra Nova find finds and configures into this crazy ass looking thing. Which you know, of course, that's who we thought might have been behind the mm -hmm. attack on Genosha. But you know, they just pulled it from that reference and then tied it into uh this other character that they revealed uh in episode seven, uh which is a cause uh, of course called Bastion. Yeah. Um that's mad. yeah people it's weird because I know the storyline of Bastion. i if you don't know the storyline and it goes back to what the director said. Remember when when uh when Storm uh when the when the uh, genocide happened, he said, Oh, that was just the start. He was like, and and even and the fact that it that it's still like I'm like, how do you get worse than that? And then when they when the Sebastian reveal uh, what it happened, I said, Oh, okay, I see where y'all going with this one. <laughs> Bro, that but for those that don't know Bastion, Bastion ain't no joke. So if you are familiar with the original X-Men 97 cartoon, you know one of the villains that they took on during that time was, uh, of course, the, the, the master mold that you just saw with uh, the destruction of Genosha, and another villain by the name of Nimrod. Nimrod, Nimrod was this yeah. big-ass, metallic monster-looking android um, that really left a toll on the X-Men. I'm talking about put foot to ass and has definitely left a shoelace in their asshole and, they, and, and up there in their guts. Yeah. And so Bastion is the fusion of Master Mold and Nimrod, taking both of those collective minds and putting it into a human sentient sentinel hybrid that not only got super strength, can blast out particles, this motherfucker can control sentinels. It's like if George Bush, Ronald Reagan, Richard Nixon, <laughs> And uh, fucking Archie from Archie, Archie, uh, Archie, uh, you know, nigga in the chair came together and was like, "We want the perfect white man." That's <laughs> the perfect white man. That's Bash. That's what they did. That's what they did. They, they gave this man. Did. This man. This man got look. This man got a blonde goatee with no mustache. <laughs> he was, he was fuck. Man, evil as shit, man. Big evil. But here's so so here's the thing I got I gotta ask you um in episode seven because we gotta move over to Deadpool and Wolverine in episode seven it's revealed that Bastion has uh Magneto Magneto yeah. is alive mm -hmm. my thought on that though and what kind of threw me off about this Bastion was shaving Magneto 
Yep. So in my eyes, that means Magneto's been there for quite some time. So who is the Magneto that the X-Men have been dealing with since the return of this show? Oh, I didn't even think about it that way. Because, because again, I'm thinking like, like these don't seem like they're happening months apart. You get what I'm saying? And so for him to be shown now, and it's like, yo, like, yo, oh, you got to shave. That. His hair didn't grow out. So I'm just like, okay, was that the real Magneto? Because, again, we know Gene Gray wasn't the real Gene Gray. Yeah. Hmm. You know, so I, I, did, I didn't even think about that. That shit threw out that shit. I automatically caught it when I seen him shaving. I'm like, it, it hasn't been that long since the Genosha attack. I was like, it ain't there's no way I say it hasn't been long enough for you to have, you know, especially in cartoon wise. Like when you see those type of shaves, they indicate like, yo, it's been a minute. Yeah. And we gotta shave your shit off. So it's like, have y'all had him this whole time? And if so, who is this Magneto we've been seeing? Because like I told remember last time we were on here and I told y'all. He was kissing ass way too much. Yeah. When he called Storm a goddess and all that shit, I was like, this motherfucker's up to something. This this ain't this ain't the Eric I know. This ain't the Eric that I know. Yeah. And now and, to see. And you know what? Ooh, now that I think about it, if somebody was to put in a fake Magneto, the reason why a fake Magneto with also Magneto's memories, because you... um how uh how sinister does the reason why it would fit and work is because there would be nobody that can question magneto's mind if they read it right so the professor xavier would be able to because he knows magneto and he was friends with magneto however yeah. gene gray or even madeline at that point wouldn't because if you think about it as the x-men they never had a moment where they can they can, you know, learn more about Magneto or, you know, and everything like that. So putting him there and then making it seem like he has a change of heart, even if somebody read that his mind, they were like, well, these must be his memories or whatever. You feed it a whole bunch of evil memories, but then say, you know, a couple of memories. Yo, you might, you might have, you might have, you might have cooked something, bro. Cause I haven't heard nobody say this yet either. Yeah. So that's, that was my thing. And then too, what also gave me away with that and how you're bringing up, and I appreciate you uh, calling that out. Um, him no longer needing the helmet, although it was symbolic to say Charles is not there. Who's to say that there isn't a receptor built to where that doesn't happen? Because even remember, like that's why that's why Cyclops was like, "Yo, let me read. Yo, have Gene read your mind." But he was like, "Yeah, I don't have no problem with that." But that was a great tactic to not have a telepath read your mind. Yeah, because like, yo, I'm an open book. And it's just like, or maybe there's nothing up there, but like you said, me these memories to block y'all and programming. Yeah. Because the more I thought about it too, look at the fight. Why did Magneto not directly go for the master mode? He's not made, he's made out of metal. So Bro. why wouldn't you go directly <laughs> for the master mode? Why would you throw trains at it? Why would you do all of this other stuff and not just go literally rip him in half with your powers. Right. It looked like you were meant to be a sacrifice. Man, yo, hey, that's... Uh, hey, yeah. That's just my, yo, that's yo, my yo, hear me just, out. Hey, that might, be your, that might be your greatest hear me out yet. <laughs> I, appreciate I appreciate that. And that's going to be the clip. That is going to be the clip. So I got to know, what do you think um episode eight and nine are leading to we know bastion and mr sinister are working together we know trask is we don't know what the fuck trask is right now <laughs> trask is something <laughs> um we don't know what he's turned into but he didn't turn into some shit um but what do you think is going to be the next steps because this is a three-part finale right i want to say we get 10 episodes right yeah yeah so we got eight nine and ten left hmm so, ah, because here's the thing. All right, Magneto's still alive. We we got Bastion. We know Xavier's on his way back. Mm -hmm. We know the Avengers are out here because we saw Captain America. <laughs> Which, wait, by the way. 
Yo. Hey, that scene. Rogue was like, all right, then. Fuck it, then. <laughs> Just launch this shit now. Yo, let, let, let me tell you. Yeah, him. yeah. Yo, let me just say, when I tell you, Rogue had the greatest response to watching a boyfriend die. Oh, now, yeah. look, now, look. I know people going to be like, no, and try to say that. But look, that that's what you do when you lose the love of your life. Not take a fucking town hostage and pretend that this nigga is still alive. <laughs> I didn't see you over there. I didn't see everybody <laughs> because you upset that your vibrator passed away. <laughs> this is what you do when the love of your life dies. You go find out where the fuck this guy is, and then you take. America's greatest hero and say <laughs> fuck you and the horse you ride in on and throw this nigga's shield across three mountains and all he can do is sit there and take that shit and I don't and look I know Cap don't cuss but this I bet anything when Rogue flew off he just looked up like this bitch <laughs> Like, you know she what? She just, no, she tossed that motherfucker. She just, she just lost her. She just lost her man. I ain't gonna stress, but bitch, if this was any other situation, <laughs> I'd have had to put these star spangled banners on her. Oh, I would. I ooh, I'd have made her go get that shield. Oh man, bro, she tossed it. I know he. It's funny because like it's this is not the um. The, the Captain America from like the live action MCU, right? But then like I just think about I just think about like the interaction of like Thor and Captain America <laughs> and Thor like ah, I bet you wish you had pneumonia. <laughs> right. Like, bet that bet did you. not come back. <laughs> it did not. Man, she made sure this this is not a ricocheting throw. This is and nigga it, go get. It. Oh, go and get before it. before we theorize about that, I just want to talk about some some quick highlight points because yeah. one so I, apparently, our the Milky Way is the ghetto. <laughs> Milky Way ghetto as fuck. Milky Way ghetto as fuck. All right, <laughs> we got to talk. We got so we got we got to hold that. We got to hold that down. Uh, what what else is a a, 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 a goaded moment there? Because like that that's the thing. This show, like I said, the writers have been on it, bro. The writers yeah. have been so fucking on it, man. Like yeah, and it, I got, like, I got it, to give it to them. And they even shout out to the fact that you know, with the Easter eggs, like I said, with that all the way in episode two or three, and when it was at that gala, we saw Bastion. Yeah, we saw we him. We saw Bastion pass by, bro. Had no like, idea that was him. No idea. Like it's no so, idea that was him. It's so crazy that the layers that they're putting in into this show is like, yo, this is this has been dope. But yeah, no, I just want to talk about yeah, because like we're we're apparently we in the ghetto, so I just want to make sure. Yeah, it's ghetto as fuck. Um, <laughs> which is, which is kind of fucked up because if what's our ghetto if the whole planet ghetto? <laughs> I, I was I was slightly offended. I was like, listen, um, I know Port Arthur ain't no great ass place, but you <laughs> you said this whole planet ghetto, so. <laughs> No, I don't the galaxy ghetto. She said the, the whole galaxy ghetto. Oh, galaxy ghetto. <laughs> as far, but as far as we know, we the only one on this uh, got life on the planet. So I can also see why she would think it's ghetto. You got abandoned planets and shit like that. You ain't got no homes getting built. I saw a fucking Martian trying to kidnap a nigga out off his bike the other day. This place ghetto as fuck. All y'all crowded into one section and shit like that. Y'all don't know how to spread the fuck out. This shit ghetto was here. You got dead planets by your son and shit like that. Y'all can y'all confused about this other little small ice block if it's a planet, if it's not a planet. Like y'all fucking ghetto, ghetto. And then and then yeah. y'all not well traveled. Y'all don't even travel outside y'all galaxy. Like man, y'all yo, ghetto. Really, yo, you really think? Because I know they call us Terrans. Yo, y'all really think they look at us as like ghetto ass niggas? It, like, I, think about like what you think the Centaurians think of us. Like, like if we all at a party, you got them, you got the people from Xandor, you got uh uh nebulous people, everybody in a ball, and like a group of Terrans walk up. Like, you know, like when you see some people like mm, mm, think, okay. think, think about it this way: in all other galaxies and everywhere like that, they have um they have elevated beings, beings that are at a whole, a whole another higher plane. I don't who's who's our higher plane being. We got a Hulk. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. But I don't know what that does for us, but we got a Hulk. Uh, as Guardians be wanting to come down here and get some ass. Oh. Do, they look at, do they look at the Hulk as like a steroids user? Because uh, it was man, it was it was manufactured. It wasn't Hulk is like our Hulk is like our UFC fight. You know what okay. I'm saying? Like <laughs> when they be wanting to go like watch entertainment, like that's who we'd have to send over there to go be entertainment in like the universe is UFC. Like I really didn't like think about that until that lady said that. Like oh, no one really would be at all. No wonder we be trying so hard. Look at how they think. They really think we ghetto as fuck. They use us as entertainment. We really are the ghetto. We love in hip hop. We we love in galaxy. We really are love in galaxy. We love in galaxy. Like, they, bro. like yo, they was ready to blow this planet up. They was like, yo, I don't, I don't un, like people. Like you remember in Eternals, they was like, I don't get why you love this fucking planet so much. And really, Asheron just wanted to say this place is ghetto. Like, why are you trying to stop his his fucking celestial being from being born? This place ghetto as fuck. And then we Yo. got we got we got dead celestial beings just sitting around. Nobody cleaned it up. Nobody cleaned it, it up. We got Eternals falling in love with drug dealers, so that's why they don't want to leave. No, we really are the ghetto. We really the ghetto of the universe. Ain't that some shit? That's crazy. I feel so. I don't know how to feel about that. Cause like I be wanting to say like man we got some of the, the best mutants anything that you can think of then you start really looking like yeah but outside of your mutants then what you got be like you know what there was a time when we had white only uh water fountains and they, I like that's not a good look on us and they probably be like you know the food good and but what and what is we what do we always say even in our hometown and you know we get the best barbecue you gotta go to the hood real quick you know yeah, that's what I'm like when you think the whole galaxy is, I'm like, yo, that was a wild ass statement. That was a wild, that was statement. A wild statement for her to say. And I was just like, I got mad because I was just like, well, who is this bitch? Who this you know, bitch just to just judge us? And to use our word. That's our word. Yo, that's our word. That's yo, y'all, she y'all, said y'all. ratchet, I'd have been tight. If she's so, so, that, so that means that she spent time in our galaxy, learned what ghetto was understood it and then went back and was like oh yeah this is the ghetto right. nah that's what it is that's what it is right there that's what it is right there deuce she somebody screwed her over somebody left her <laughs> hand down here one she's night. she's corn she, she came here to get some tearing ass and that tearing <laughs> ass was a one night stand and they left and she thought she she thought she put it down and she didn't she had to take that walk of shame back to her spaceship and she and she <laughs> felt some type of way Imagine walking on the loading bay and she ain't got right. her shoes on. Everybody looking at her like, <laughs> you, just, you just let us know when you want to leave, your highness. Mm-hmm. In the ghetto. <laughs> like, I don't know where she was last night. <laughs> Messing around with, the, with Devontae again, I see. I don't know. I don't know where this goes. Because I, mean, I remember when we first, when we did our first, we theorized just where this season would go and how it would end. But right now, because of the what they gave us and knowing that that wasn't the worst, I feel like we, this is not going to end happy. <laughs> For sure. Oh, wow. For I sure. Think it's gonna definitely, I think it's going to end on a cliffhanger. Um, I think they're definitely going to give us that so they can bring it back. Um, you know what it really is? I feel like, I feel like, I feel like it's going to cause a war between this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel mm-hmm. like something's going to start where we're going to get a war because even like in the last episode, like we saw like so many references to like Captain America. We even saw like a sign that says Stark Industries yeah. uh, in the episode and everything like that too. And then there's been talks of like, you know, Spider-Man from the Spider-Man 98 making a cameo back into here. And um, it's just like, okay, you got, I feel like it's going to be an all hands on deck type of thing. Yeah, like I think it's gonna be one of those like, hey, this dude, uh, Bastion might be. All right, you got something? Because I, I don't, because I don't know either. I don't know no, either. So you, so you, you kind of um sparked like uh, just a, a idea that I that a memory. So when Scott was talking and he was kind of talking about like the state of the world and how the world they're not necessarily they they understand mutants now, but the reason why they are shunning humans now is because they're scared. 
that uh retaliation from master mode and everything so remember like and remember so and then even scott was like you know magneto was telling us that magneto ben said it that right and because of all of the avengers referencing we all assume that we're eventually going to get x-men versus avengers here's what i think now and this is a hear me out i think we're going to get our first glimpse of an evil x-men and not necessarily evil like they go like brainwash evil, but now they feel like because the world has turned their back on them, Master Mode and them and Nimrod is coming. And when they figure out Bash is coming, like they're gonna have to really be on that. And we already saw Rogue kill somebody, and the X Men kind of was like, "Yo, I mean, this is where we at." You know what I'm saying? Like a few of them said stuff, yeah. but like no, nope, a lot of people didn't speak up. A lot of people was like, "Hey, we had Wolverine was like she did what she had to do." And so what you said that leading up to that to an all out war, we see that evil version of the X-Men. And then if we if the, if if Deadpool is really bringing them within, that's that I can see what when the Avengers would have to step in because Cap now can report like, no, I saw Rogue and I tried to I tried to reason with her. She threw my fucking shield out the window and now they killing people. We got to step in. And he referenced me and my team. I had to he, he referenced his team. So yeah, we might really be leading up to the so, X. You think we might be leading towards X Men versus Avengers? Yeah, we might really do. Okay, no, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. I can see that happening. And then that's that's a good build to moving in even to like you know our final topic, which is of course the uh, Deadpool and Wolverine trailer um, that Woo. dropped. And um, let me just say, you know, as they as you, <laughs> Chef's kiss, Chef's. <laughs> Yes, man. Uh, one one thing, just to even just jump into it, that I loved about it was how both trailers were presented. How yeah. trailer one is the bigger perspective is on Deadpool, and on the second one, it's the perspective of Wolverine, which yeah. goes back to the director saying that this is not a Deadpool three movie. This is a Deadpool and Wolverine movie, yeah. and them showing us that still has me going. I have no idea what this story is about. Me at either. all, me either, but I'm here for it. And this is one thing that I think also is helping this chemistry in regards to that. The fact that Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman have been friends and then been doing this back and forth way before they even put prints on a movie, you can already see the chemistry and where that goes, right? Oh, yeah. and like this is literally a buddy cop. Mar uh, classic comic book, classic, right. classic, and then classic comic book references too. Yes. But they have it like they really went in on. I agree with you on that. Yeah, and so I'm excited. I, I, I'm super excited for this for for that. Like I haven't been this excited for a MCU projects since maybe Endgame. No, no, yeah. I take it back. Since, since Spider Man, because of yeah, because of everything with uh with uh, with No Way Home. Spider-Man No Way Home. Like, I'm just, I'm really excited for this because one, I I got, you know, I generally try to watch only the teaser in the first trailer, right? And so, yeah. you know, that's where we're at right now. And I feel like it gave me enough to get excited for. It gave me enough where I don't have to seek more. I can, I'm like, I'm ready for this movie. I am ready. Yeah. I don't need more. I don't, you know, I'm ready for this movie. And even with the small with the with the Easter eggs that they threw in the trailer, I'm just like, oh my god! If they do this, like like, I'm already hooked. They like Marvel, they really went crazy with just this whole project in regards to it. No, they did, and I like, but I also too like that they haven't given anything too much away. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, good that we've seen the suit. Good that we've seen like, okay, what this can kind of lead to, even some of the cameos, but we still don't relatively know what this story is about. And I feel like Deadpool did a really good job of yeah. getting us back to what a trailer is supposed to do. It's not supposed to tell you everything. It's not supposed to give away everything. It's supposed to only give you some of these small things because even like we've seen, like uh, just the stuff that we saw in the trailer, I feel like, yo, that's maybe five minutes to 10 minutes of the movie. Right. Yeah, no idea still what this story is about. But here's, so here's the one thing I, I, I've been... I've been trying to figure out, so I wanted to get your, of course, your expertise on this as well. Okay. And just letting you know, this is probably going to give you a headache. Um, <laughs> if we delve into this, but I want to know from you, what Wolverine do you think we're dealing with? 
Now we know in the in the, in the trailer it stated. You know, if you haven't seen the trailer, we're giving some spoilers away. So if you don't want to hear it, mute it right now, or go continue to watch one of the other episodes or check out Geek Blasphemy. But I want to know from you with them saying that he let down his universe, as uh, uh, uh what's his face said from the TVA, I think Novak or No Jax or whatever his name is, I forget. Um, said that this Wolverine let down his entire universe. Mm. What Wolverine? And what rendition do you think this Wolverine is? Is he the Logan character? Is he from the 20th Century Fox? Or is he from something brand new? So I when it, when I heard that, I was leaning towards the Logan one. Because remember, we was dealing with the aftermath of everything being the shit. The Hulk's running and everything like that. Um, But also, depending on, like I said, we know that. Like I said, uh, we just talked about how Marvel likes doing the continuations right now, right? Mm -hmm. um, because if they did the Logan one, they really have to go back. It's not a continuation. How Well, we know that time travel always has repercussions. And in mm -hmm. Days of Future Past, we really never addressed the, the repercussions of what Logan did, going back, doing all that and everything like that. I might I'm I'm kind of leaning towards he might be that one now. So so here's so here's my thing with this. If we're going off MCU's rules, yes, and that's what yep. days of future past technically makes Wolverine a variant. Yes, it does. It technically makes him a variant. Yes, it does. So if that is the case, according to the TVA. They would wipe out that, that existence. Yep, he he should have been pruned. Yeah. So and then so that's my so then that's my whole thing about like so. Oh it, my god! Keep on going. <laughs> no, no, no. What you got? What you got? Because I was going to say you, that makes the most sense because also we don't know if Wolverine can be pruned, and so if Wolverine can be pruned, all right, you just got to live with. The guilt that you fucked up this universe. We're gonna see into another universe. Whatever, go over there. But you gotta live with the guilt that you fucked up your whole universe because we can't kill you because we don't we don't you know because it's regeneration. Of, right, so we don't we don't know if we can kill you. So we're just gonna put you in a different universe and you gotta live with that guilt. But see, so then that's but see, so then that's my thing. If that's the case, and then again, we're still going back to TVA rules. That yeah. timeline would have to have been pruned, right? Yeah. So then that means the days of future past and which what he changed, that did not happen. And then the one four days of future past that we know where Charles Xavier is still alive, Magneto is still alive, that is the correct timeline. Mm -hmm. So then it so that's so that's also my thing as to why I don't know if that's him or if it's that Wolverine and something else happened. Because again, we don't know the full Fox cinematic uh, uh, what happened with them, which also leads me to believe too in the trailer, as we saw, like when they show the uh, dead Ant Man and they then turned it into a station. Bro, and that's they, when I saw that. I said, "Hey, that's fucked first, up." First of all, I was like, "Oh my god, y'all <laughs> pulling, y'all <laughs> pulling from old man Logan owners, and you turn it into a base." And, I was and, like, uh, "Yo, bad guy base at that." The bad I was like, guy. "The Logan, you are a sick motherfucker." You are sick as fuck. But seeing all those people out there, like, you know, I don't know if you had noticed, but like all of those are supposed to be cameos from yeah. the Fox Cinematic Universe. So supposedly they're supposed to be Toad, uh, Sabretooth, Lady De Death Strike, Ezazel is there. Um, what's a uh, Pyro? Is that his name? The Firestarter? Yeah. Pyro, yeah. right? Um, and I forgot the other one, but here's my theory on that. I don't think that that's the ones from the Fox universe. I do not think it's like the more I started looking at that stuff and I was looking at down there, I was like, that don't look like Kelly Hugh, ladies, Lady Deathstrike. And right, it doesn't. If you go back and look, I was like, that don't look like her. So I, it might be a variant of them. It might be. But here's the thing. And, and then, because here's the thing. I feel like this movie because so in the last in the first deadpool he went back and wrote multiple wrongs right 
We know that this one is the same thing. I mean, I mean, in, in the last one, he went back on rock, multiple wrongs across different platforms in the Ryan Reynolds verse, right? Mm -hmm. We might, so you might be right because like I said, we might be dealing with, okay, days of future past, Logan, but then this universe might be dealing with a different universe because again, we got, we're still dealing with the TVA. We're still dealing with time travel. Yeah. We keep on focusing on one universe. Well, he might I just multiple universes. I just thought about this again too. Deadpool is technically now a variant because he went change time. So that mm -hmm. means that's that what that's must be that must be what it means when he said my universe is in jeopardy because they're about to prune it. Yeah. That's what it is. They're about to prune his universe. And they have to try to stop. He has to try to stop it somehow. Because at first we thought it may be an incursion that's causing it or, or yeah. whatnot. But I believe that because the TVA is involved, they're getting ready to prune him and to prune his universe. Because technically that's not the timeline that's supposed to be happening. Remember how the, uh, the uh, uh, Grand Sorcerer explained it. When yeah. you make this, it starts to make a different line <laughs> that comes out of what the original one was. So when yeah. the original Wade was supposed to lose his girlfriend, all of that shit was supposed to happen. Yep. And, and they changed it. Yeah. And then, and like I said, in that, in that last scene, when he would, he hit like four different universes. So that means yeah. that he just, he just said, boom, 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 but like, Ooh, yeah. Hmm. So, so it could be that it could either be they're about to prune it, or it could be like how you said, and since he went to, went to multiples, it could be an incursion causing it with all of them. Damn, that's good, bro. I'm so ready for this damn movie. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, man. I am, I am too, bro. I am too. But I'm, I, I'm curious to see what Wolverine we gonna get, how they gonna play this out, because we know all of the X Men do line up, but now with the new rules of like the MCU and time travel. Where does that go? Because I even stay, I even was stating too that I don't think Cassandra Nova is the main villain. I don't, I don't think that she's the main villain. I think that she may be the main villain to Wolverine, but I don't think that she's the main villain. I think that there's so much more in play that they're not showing to us because to reveal her like that. And if you kind of notice, it's like they send her, they send the, it's like they're like, you know, at the end when they're jumping into the, uh, the ring and stuff like that. And we could tell, you know, just because of like the trailers yeah. have been, they'll CGI what the real thing is. Cause I was looking, I was like, there's no way they jumping into the straight sky. So where, where were y'all really going? So, and they didn't show that they showed. So I, I figure as much, they CGI that part out. So, we didn't see exactly and didn't figure out exactly where they were jumping to. But it's like, <clears throat> if yeah. she has mind control like that and telepathy like that and telekinesis like that, she could have easily stopped that. So it's like, what is really going on? And it's like, did she send them there? Or was it was mm -hmm. it really an escape? Or did they part or did they kind of figure out some shit and come to a truce? Because if you notice when they jumping in there, she's standing right there. I don't know if you yeah. caught that. She's standing right there, smiling. So it's just kind of like, okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, so it's just kind of like, okay, um, are y'all working together now? Like, what's going on? Which is what really and just then, makes me even more excited because I'm like, yo, I have no idea where this movie is going. Yeah, bro, because they, because there's so much. Because, hmm. But I really yeah. think, I, yeah, I really think we finna get a, some cameos of different people playing these different characters finally, like how we saw in Loki. Like, I really, I'm still under the impression, bro, like Lady Deathstrike is not Kelly Hugh. Like, it's gonna be yeah. cast by some other, like, big name actor and stuff like that. Be like, who the fuck is this off ass Lady Deathstrike? Because you can see Deadpool doing that <laughs> shit. Yeah. You can so see him doing that shit and then mixed in with a couple of the real ones. So, like, that might not be uh, Izazel that was played by the original actor and stuff. It may be somebody else. True. Yeah, because it was too far back. You couldn't really tell at that point. Yeah, because the only way that can now happen, like I was thinking of, of, it has to be that the timeline that he made got pruned and that the TVA is lying to him about it. Like to, to say that, like, yo, he let down his entire universe. I think they were behind the shit and of they're course. blaming him for it. Because no, if you I think just, about it, I, 
the do- because the TBA, I mean, low key TBA was evil as shit. So I can see exactly. Them Exactly. So we can't sit here and believe what they saying. And then it's just like when you think about it, because the original X-Men timeline before Days of Future Past, a lot of them died. Like Kelly Hugh died from an emantium overload that wouldn't send her to the void. She would just be dead. So that wouldn't send her there. The only way she could have went there is if he the the Days of Future Past timeline he he, that was rewritten still had her in there. But then also, too, we don't know how any of that transpired out. Why? Because when Stryker met Wolverine, he met him in a different now type of thing. Would he have ever ran into Lady Deathstrike like that? Yeah, because and and that and that, I think that what one of the the big allures of this movie that's what it's going to give us is that we're going to get so many plot holes answered. I think mm-hmm. I think because because they're gonna have to lead up into whatever the climax is on this movie, and but they're gonna have to give us that you know those stakes of why this person is here, these people are there, and like and you're right, we don't know if he would have if he would have ever ran into her. Yeah, you have so many of them now. That's like okay, did Jean Grey's incident ever happen in that timeline? Because even we saw Cyclops was back. We saw that right. Rogue and Bobby, Bobby and Iceman were together. Yeah, and then and then it's also it's like okay, what? No, no, yeah, you're right, bro. I this stuff. <laughs> I told you it's gonna give you a headache. I told you that shit was gonna give you a headache. That shit was gonna give you a headache. So you got uh, three. So you you basically got, in a sense, you have three different versions of this Fox Logan. So you yeah. have the original. Where we have five X Men one, two, and three, as if that timeline continued, where he killed Jean Grey. Then we have the Wolverine when he went to Japan and stuff like that. So we know that's what that one is tied into. And so, but if if that one happens, then that leads to Charles Xavier still being alive, Magneto being alive, and we get mm-hmm. back to what the Sentinels destroyed everything, which leads us to Days of Future Past. Then we have the Logan that changed time and came back to char- to us seeing Charles again and being like, oh, hey, you know, what's... Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, shit. I just thought about that. That's not true because the, it, it is four different ones because I forgot Charles dies in X3. He, Remember, Phoenix sure kills. Does. Phoenix yeah, kills. Sure so you have that version where there is no Charles Xavier anymore. Um, we don't really know what happened to Magneto. Then you have Days of Future Past, where it's like, okay, if that if that's there, then we don't know what that timeline leads to. Mm-hmm. Then you have the one where Charles Xavier does survive, and you have Days of Future Past. And then you have the other one that leads into Charles killing everybody, and that leads to Old Man Logan. Well, Logan, I'm sorry, not old man Logan, yeah. but Logan, when he gets old. Right. So you have four different versions, and I can I can safely assume that it's supposed to be they're not going to mess with old man Logan. But, yeah, like you said, no, dealing it, it, with time. It wouldn't make sense. Like I said, you know, if you if you bring that one back, remember, he died at the end of old man Logan, so meaning that you would have to go before the events of old man Logan, and that mm-hmm. wouldn't make sense. Well, no, 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 no. It actually could because think back to Avengers Endgame of how Cap did his time travel. If you put Logan back where he needs to go, but do you think you, you think Deadpool is going to operate like Cap? What well, no, are But again, too, like, like, but the, but it ain't up to Deadpool. It would be up to like the TVA and stuff. Oh, like that's that. true. True. You're right. You're right. Him, like right back where he's supposed to go. That is true. That is true. Yes. Yeah. So and and that's that would be the thing. So it's just like. It's really hard to figure out what Wolverine this is and what story we're picking back up on. But it's like, yo, you got four different versions of Fox Wolverine that you could choose from. Yeah. And I still don't know which one that they're going to choose from. I think the Days of Future Past one and that the, the way that you laid it out, I think it makes the most sense. I think that's the better theory because, again, mm-hmm. it for continuity and also... Even like even though the TVA is 
is is evil they have been consistent in their rules and, and that's the one thing in a lot of comic book movies and in general is that you know when you start when we where we'll start nitpicking it's like okay y'all not even going by the rules that y'all set so if you really want to if you really want to insinuate the t uh the tva more and really showcase that their that their rules make mean something and it's a it's a it's also a, a easy way to say well everybody been asking where's this x-men's been well mo they all got pruned except except this logan because of whatever the, so i i do feel like that the days of future past one does make the most sense i'm leaning towards that one i like that i like that i like that idea better yeah and now but you just gave me an idea with that what if an incursion happened between days of future past the original oh, 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 oh. and the new one he did that'd be crazy that'd be crazy. i think that's what it is i think that's what it is I think an incursion happens. That'd be fire, that's what it that's what destroys everything, which is why they state it's all his fault. And he let them and down. yep. And also because okay, because now I'm thinking about okay, because right now the most knowledgeable per person about everything that's going on is Loki. Mm -hmm. Like, because like Ant-Man got a little bit, but Loki literally legitimately knows about the war, about the cycle, about everything, right? So with Deadpool getting there. And then I guarantee you, he's going to end up learning everything. So now we're going to have Loki and Deadpool who knows everything. And then Loki now with that, with a Wolverine who's, who's built with it. And then, cause if you think about Deadpool's reaction to learning that there's this big war and then Logan gets to tell him about the big war that happened of an incursion and how it happened and how it went down. And now they're in a situation where, like I said, Deadpool is still an anti-hero where he's like, okay, well, my job is to help stop this shit. So let's let's stop this shit. And now you you fight in variants and variants to prevent the bigger multiverse war. Oh, <laughs> bro. Because <laughs> here's the thing: you said my head was going to hurt going in because we are you already had theories, and here we just added like four other extra theories. <laughs> I think that's it, though. I think that's it. I think I think those two made an incursion and they wound up clipping that entire universe yep and I just think, left I think universally we i think we're on the same page of a universe definitely got pruned the fuck out of here <laughs> yeah and we and we haven't seen another type of incursion yeah you know what i'm saying so we haven't seen like any of that just yet so it also could be too like Logan could have been taken out of there and put put somewhere else. I don't know, man. I don't know. Like I said it, this is it gives them an out. It it gets it, it it lets Marvel be like, we're recognizing these other universes, we're making it a part of this MCU world. We don't have to pull from everybody no more because we can explain what end up happening because the time travel stuff and everything we had to prune them so that's why none of those stars that's why none of those people none of those characters are here because of x y and z and you can and that's and that's a way to include the fox universe and everything like that without having to do like we got to do another project with them but it's like it's more so just including them and giving them a proper send-off a send-off yeah. that makes sense and matters yeah I feel that. I feel that. Oh, um, hey, that's fire. <laughs> whoo, man. So, yeah, y'all know, y'all know how we feel, man. But, but overall, we know that these are probably the X Men and probably a uh, Deadpool is one going to be one of the the top ones of Marvel that we get this year, uh, which I'm not mad at because uh, definitely hitting back to the drawing board is key um, to get us ready. But, um, man, bro, I'm excited for July. Man, July can't come any quicker. <laughs> July cannot come any quicker. Because again, like I said, bro, I still don't know what the fuck finna happen in this movie. I don't yeah. know what we finna see. I don't know what's finna be said. But I do know one thing that I did love was that we still are going to get the hilarious way that we know. Because at yeah. the end of the like, the end of the trailer is my favorite <laughs> fucking part. But he was like, hey. Kevin Fight, he said, absolutely. No cocaine is on the table. He was like, what about Bolivia Virtue Powder? They got all the slang terms. It's on the list. 
<laughs> yeah, when she said white girl interrupted, I fell the fuck out. <laughs> it was like, do you want to build a snowman? Yes. <laughs> <But you can't. laughs> and you know what? It, it, it goes back to what we said ep- episodes, episodes, way episodes ago. We was like, all right, the first F bomb really has to come from way. We, we was like, all those, all the things that go against Marvel, it has to be either addressed or broken by Wade. And so I love yeah. the fact that he gets to play with it. And I do too, and I and I and I'm glad that he got to go back and hit his improvs and stuff like that, and like yes, yeah. why he allowed him to run as far as far as he needed to. Yep, as far as he needed to. So I'm excited, man. Um, but we want to know uh, about you know like y'all thoughts in the comments below. Uh, let us know how you're feeling about X Men '97. If it's making you cry and being your feelings like it is with us. Uh, mm-hmm. Let us know in the comments below. Let us know what you think about the Deadpool and Wolverine uh, trailer, a second trailer, excuse me, dropping. And if you're excited to see the movie or what reservations you may have about the movie, we want to know in the comments below so we can discuss. But before we get up out of here, I always want uh, Deuce to be able to shout out what he's doing, what he has coming up, and how y'all can support. Because look, talk boys are not cheap. All right. <laughs> 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 and they're not cheap at all. So. They are not. <laughs> do take it away. All right, man. Hey, one, follow me on all social media platforms, young underscore deuces. Um, I kind of took a hiatus from doing interviews because as you can see, we've been focusing on the black geek documentary. Uh that, that is moving full fledged. Like I said, I'm heading to New York next week to do some stuff there. So man, listen here. We got you can you can sign up to our Patreon, patreon.com backslash geek set to see what we have with the black geek documentary all of our behind the scenes and our journey right now is there you can sign up let's there we have tiers from a dollar to a 50. the reason why you can get everything from both all all of those tiers is that we just generally want people to support so for a dollar you can learn everything and if you want to throw in a little bit more you have your option of adding you know what you choose to pledge and help out with but all those funds get redirected to there and also if you're if you're if you choose to do it our patreon subscribers no matter what tier you are, you're going to get a thank you shout out in the credits for the Black Geek documentary. So you have that there as well in regards to that. But on our YouTube page, youtube.com backslash Geek Set Podcast, I did an emergency one-on-one with Deuces with Carl Jones. Um, Carl Jones is doing his animated studio called Martian Blueberry. And we wanted to talk about that because, you know, we are the reporters of the culture. So we wanted to make sure we highlight that and talk about that and everything. So make sure you go check that out. And last but not least, go to geeksetpodcast.com. As you can see, we have merch. We have the Black Geek documentary merch. And again, all those funds for the merch is going back to the documentary. So if you want to rep, like I said, you can get you shirts. We got hats. Where's that? We got scullies. We got shorts. We got girl shorts. We got everything. So, you know what I'm saying? Come, Come represent. You know what I'm saying? Get you that Black Geek documentary merch. Support. And same thing. You purchase some merch. You get you get you uh, you end up in the credits. That's what we're that's what we're doing for as as far as our gift back for you guys supporting and everything like that. So that's that's what I got going on, man. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed, man. Hey, make sure y'all go over there and support, 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 man. These dreams cost money. Cost money. And these things that y'all want to see cost money. So, man, <laughs> go ahead. And make sure y'all support. Young Deuce, the Geek Set Podcast, and of course, the uh, Black Geek Document coming out. Cannot wait to uh, uh, see that. It's been a long time being made, man. And I cannot wait to see what is what comes out of it. So, And of course, y'all can follow me on Will Ferrell Everything. Uh, make sure you tune in to RK Tokens and my page as well for Stride of a Comic Book. And then uh, my Twitch channel as well. We're going to be uh, fleeing. And some Please? of y'all don't know about the fleet. <laughs> the fleet is coming, man. You know, kicking off just like the last, the last, the end of the of an era, man. The end of GTA Five, man. GTA Six is about to roll out, so man, we want to just we want to collect as much as we can, get as many heists as we can get going, and we just want the audience to see it and enjoy it with us before we say goodbye to Los Santos and say hello to whatever the fuck that big ass map is. I know it ain't Vice City no more because that's just a little part inside the map. But we are so ready to get into the next chapter of GTA. So come join us as we say goodbye to it on our Twitch channel until GTA 6 uh, jumps out. Yes, indeed. So I've been your host, uh, Will Farrow. Thank you for checking out another episode of Strata Comic Book, and we will catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.
Man, you come straight out of a comic.